Before we move on from the oxygen acetylene processes, I'd like to discuss brazing. Brazing is one of the most important uses of oxygen acetylene. Brazing can be at a variety of temperatures, as low as low melting point silver solder to high tensile silver solder, which is really silver brazing, or bronze brazing, which we're all familiar with. And there are distinct uses of brazing over fusion welding. When we think of brazing, people think of lower tensile strength or a process that is not strong, and nothing could be further from the truth. Silver hard silver brazing takes place at higher temperatures, still below the threshold for fusion welding, so the metal wets at the surface and the brazing process takes place, making a very strong bond at the surface without fusion welding. Being lower temperature, providing for high tensile when necessary, we're talking about materials that will be bonded together in a special way. While bracing is a very effective way to join metals, it is not suited for some types of joints, and I'll explain that. When I'm brazing, I'm thinking in terms of capillary action and flux with bronze flowing into a lapped joint like this as opposed to a butt joint for lap brazing and that could be along this seam as well as the opposite seam we can create a joint that is exceptionally strong and well bonded depending upon our filler material again if i were going for the maximum tensile strength and wanted something in the 100,000 pounds per square inch tensile i would use hard silver type brazing rod for lighter jobs, up to 45,000 pounds per square inch tensile, I would use bronze, which flows really well and melts at a relatively low temperature. Another joint that would be useful would be a T-joint. Bronze would work well for this. Hard silver would work well for this. Running the bead along here and along here, we could form a fillet, if you will, that would be very strong. To put into perspective the strength possible with brazing process, brazing has been used to make aircraft light frames, has been used to join pieces together that are lapped in uh, industry and in tools. Brazing is suitable for even making projects like go-karts or a boat frame or something of that nature. There is also aluminum brazing a process in itself that can be done with the oxyacetylene torch and that should be taken into consideration as an alternative to TIG welding. I'll demonstrate brazing as a process and show the fundamentals of the lower temperature that applies when brazing pieces of metal together and in the process reducing the heat affected zone yet making an exceptionally strong bond between those joints. Bracing is also handy for repairing linkages, for assembling fitments that are actually lapping or capillary prospects. Hard silver can be used on joints like air conditioning lines where you're away from rubber but have to make a strong bond on steel. Automotive restoration work often involves bronze. Some body work even involves bronze, although bronze is more difficult to prep and paint than using metal or a fusion process. The reason why we would do that would be to reduce the temperature and reduce the risk of buckling the metal. For those unfamiliar with high tensile silver or other types of high tensile bracing, I'm using Weld Molds 26C on this project which is very high tensile in the range of 100,000 pounds per square inch. And what's taken place here, this is semi-steel, basically a casting that has iron in it as well as scrap steel to reduce the carbon content and make it perform in the casting more like steel. In this case, I've already done a weld repair on the inside of this, but it was porous, although strong, and to remedy that, Strictly for appearance sake, I've made successive overlays of the 26C product. You can see this surface has been ground and you can see that it finishes. There's absolutely no voids whatsoever. This has uh, flowed in a way that we have 
uh, consistency and I'll be able to grind off this section here and finish it just like I've done here. When I'm through, the handle will look as new and will be suitable for painting and so forth. I'm going to demonstrate the brazing process using flux coated brazing rod. This rod has a coating on it that eliminates the need to heat up the brass and dip it into flux and that's a process that we can do but this is much more efficient and not as time consuming. Since we're brazing I'm going to work with two pieces of scrap initially. This is just some stuff I have laying around. This piece is uh, approximately 3 30 seconds of an inch thick and this is about a sixteenth. The difference in the thickness is of less concern to me in the brazing process because we're not heating these metals to the fusion point. We're just heating these metals to the point that they wet as the term applies and we flow the bronze at that stage. We have our oxygen and acetylene regulator set for 4 psi on each and I'm using a number two tip. That seems like a larger tip for this size metal and so on but again we're not fusion welding we're brazing and I'm going to hold the torch back from the metal because I don't want to actually melt it and in that case I actually prefer the control I can have and the ability to do a softer carburizing flame which I'll show you in a second uh, when I do the brazing process. So I'm going to use a number two tip. I've set up a couple of pieces of 16 gauge sheet metal and I'm going to demonstrate a lap braze of these two pieces. They're overlapping here and my heat's going to go across in this direction so that you can see it and I'll dip my rod from the back side. Kind of an awkward angle for me but a better way for you to see it and I'll demonstrate a lap on this side and then turn the piece over and complete the lap on the other side. Again, the ob objective with brazing is not like welding. We want a slight carburizing or soft flame. So we're going to introduce the oxygen. And when we make the cone, instead of coming into a welding type cone like this, we're going to make it a little bit soft. And remember, we're going to keep the torch slightly away from the pieces of metal because the goal here is not to fuse these metals together, but rather to heat them to the point of being wet and when they have that wet look we'll introduce the brazing rod. You can see that metal is starting to get red, cherry red. We don't want it too hot, we don't want to melt it and this is only 16 gauge. So at this point we're going to introduce the bronze filler. You can hear the flux working. We're going to create a bead across here in that sense not unlike welding but this is brazing where it's a capillary action we're going to get some of that flux to flow into that joint and in the process of doing that we're going to get a capillary reaction keep the metal hot not to the point of welding let the flux do its work if you've soldered, this process should be familiar. And that side is now brazed. You can see the brazing leaves a very strong bond. You can see how the bronze follows the flux. Wherever the flux went, so goes the bronze. This is 45,000 tinsel, so we're talking about a strong bond. And if we look down the side, we can see that there's some capillary action that that bronze has flowed underneath the lap and in that regard we not only have a fillet on the two edges we also have some capillary action as well. Now we're going to turn the piece over and very quickly braze this side to complete a double lap in this case. We're going to go ahead and braze this side. Again we're striving for carburizing flame so we don't take the cone into a welding flame like this. We're going to make it softer with a slight carburizing effect. And I'm going to drop the hood and brace this on an angle that you can actually see the process take place. And again, we're striving to heat the metals, not to the point of fusion. We don't want to liquefy the metals. We just want to wet the surface of the metals and not turn them to a molten mass here. As soon as it looks wet, I'm introducing the bronze filler rod and the flux 
trying to fill that edge. Remember the objective here is a capillary kind of approach. And don't leave voids. Move the torch slowly. Keep both pieces of metal good and hot. Introduce the filler. The flux will do its job. And the heat, again, like fusion welding with gas, you learn to control heat and you learn to control the puddle with the heat. And we now have a fully bonded double lap bronze braze. This is our second lap along this surface. It's very hot now, so I'm going to turn it over with the pliers. And you can see that that bronze flowed with the flux and also went underneath the edge to form a capillary braze. And this is an extremely strong joining of two metals. This is an ideal way to braze, and that is to lap join two metals together. Again, this is 16 gauge similar to auto body, actually a little hefty, and uh, would be a good example of how you could get a tight lap joint with two pieces of sheet metal. And there's no damage whatsoever where the lap brace was made. And on the back side, on the other lap, where we're forming a contour here, there's not even a break in that area. So again, I would emphasize that you have the advantage of strong tensile. The lapping and capillary action make this ideal for a lap joint like this. And bronze is ductile and yields, as you can see here, to a great deal of force without showing any sign of breaking or cracking.